everybody. Lois with Holy Grace is out of care. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I just lost my voice for a second. Lois with Holy Grace is out of care. With the afternoon live, we are continuing to create our forest of Christmas trees on my dining room table. If you uh, have been following a couple of lives ago, I announced I misplaced a Christmas box. So we are making all the Christmas trees. Uh, one of my piece, uh, pieces that was missing was the centerpiece from my dining room table. So I'm creating a little mini forest of various Christmas trees. And I'm excited today because we're gonna be reusing uh, some old spindles that were given to me by my precious in-laws. And uh, I just was digging through the box the other day and I thought these would make perfect Christmas trees. So I have three different ones. I've got this one here um, and I've created these little bases. My husband helped me cut these and I drilled a hole in them and they're just gonna screw right in and make a cute little Christmas tree. So we've got this shape. We've got this shape with a little metal foot on the top. We're gonna do something fun with that. And we've got, so we've got like a small one, a tall one, and this one's kind of in the middle. So we're just gonna go ahead and get started because we've got a lot of little painting to do. For the little bases, I really didn't want to do a color on them or anything. So I just have some clear wax here. This is Waverly. It's just clear wax. And I'm just going to kind of put a coat of that on here just to kind of bring out the natural, you know, make it shiny a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and do this. This is just a fun, um, when I was thinking of the digging through those spindles, which I have loved. I've already done a few projects. I did a Christmas tree the other day. I had cut the top and the bottom of a spindle and used it to top a Christmas tree, a foam Christmas tree I did with decoupage um, with some Christmas paper. And I was just like, what else can I do with these spindles? And I just got to, I'm like, oh my gosh, these look like Christmas trees by themselves. So let's do that. So. Don't be afraid. Try to think outside the box. Like something that, uh, I'm gonna kind of put these up here to the front, let them dry while we're doing the rest. Um, don't be afraid to just try and use your imagination, right? What could I do with this? What does this look like? What other object can we create out of this? Even if it's not perfect, like these happen to be cone shaped or Christmas tree shaped, but even if it just lends to it, right? Let your imagination just go. All right, so we got just like a clear coat on here just to dress those up just a little bit. We don't want them to be the star, but we wanna just, you know, dress them up a tiny bit. So we're gonna put that wax to the side. And I think we're gonna start with um, this guy here. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and screw on the base, even though I know it's probably not totally dry. But we're gonna kinda screw it on, so we wanna stand it up to paint. I'm gonna try to get it as tight as I can and bend it a little bit so it's straight. And there we have it. Isn't that the cutest thing? Now, for this one, I got, I thought I'd just, I like the brown color. Now I did hit all of them with a, just a light sand. I just took my sanding pad and kind of sanded them. Uh, I didn't want to strip everything cause like I like the old weathered look that they got going on. I wanted to still leave some of that, some of the old on there. Like this one, I cleaned up the metal a little bit, but I love the patina on that. This one, the little silver piece, this one was totally rusted over and I got it and just left a little of that patina on there. This one um, kind of had, you know, it had a divot in it, but I left this kind of, I guess that's kind of a cherry stain and I just gave it a light rough sand 
right? Not a, I didn't want to strip it totally because that's going to kind of, that's part of the charm of it. Okay, hold on. This one, I got a pure gold. This is a beautiful gold, by the way, by Folk Art Pure Gold, but this one's not open. And I think I have one. Do I? That's open already. Nope. It's going to be the only one I don't have open. Okay. I guess I'm going to have to open it. I thought I had one that was not, or that was opened. I think I must have just unscrewed. Okay, that's how I did it. All right, we're going to take a little bit of this pure gold. Look how pretty that is. And we're going to just pour it into the palette here. And I don't need a lot because we're not covering. We're just going to kind of hit it with some gold. And we're going to take a little bit. This is folk art as well. Both of these are folk art metallic. This one is a Sahara gold. So it is a little more, got a little coppery situation going on. So we're going to pour that one in. And I kind of see, you can see these on the palette. Aren't they beautiful? So we got Sahara and the pure gold. All right, and so we've got our, let me try to move this out of the way a little bit. I've got just an old chippy brush situation going on. And I'm just going to lightly dab into my gold. If you guys are following me live, please say hi in the comments. Let me know you're here, where you're watching from, what you're up to on this Friday. Even if you're watching the replay, say hi. I'd love to get to know you. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I am just going to kind of lightly brush down my little tree. I'm just going to go around. Starting at the top, and I'm just kind of hitting, kind of dry brushing, just hitting the um, ridges, so to speak, with a little dab of the gold, just like a highlight situation. Just to kind of give it a little sheen. Dry brushing is such a fun way to distress because you're not getting full coverage. You're just kind of getting the paint spread on there. Giving it a little bit of depth and character. Then we're going to come back with that brighter gold. All right, hopefully you can see this. You'll see where I just kind of hit it with that Sahara gold. That's the muted one. It's a little more coppery. And now we're going to come back we're going to hit it with that bright, pure gold. Using the same brush, there's no need to change. I'm just dipping it, barely dipping it in there. Getting a little bit on the end, kind of dabbing it. So, just a little bit. I'm just going to do the same process. Kind of brushing it, spreading it out. So you can still see the wood through that. Just giving it a little extra something. Because it's, and it's not uniform, it's not, it's, you know, kind of just feel your way with it, right? With the paint. Okay. 
not going to do, we're going to put a little topper situation on this, which is really going to be the star. So just kind of, I'm just kind of going up and down. Like I said, I'm not going for full coverage. I just want it to have a little gold shimmer. And I think we're going to call that one good. I'll move that to the side and put my brush over here. So we're going to call that good. You can still see the cherry finish under there. And it's just got some shimmer to it, which I love. So now for the top, let me put my brush in water so it doesn't get crazy. Um, for the top of our little tree, I have this beautiful fabric. Red, uh, it looks like mattress ticking to me. A uh, beautiful uh, deeper red stripe with a cream background. And I want to kind of just tear that along the fabric. I'm gonna need to, where's my scissors? Bear with me because I don't know where my fabric scissors are. So this is gonna be fun. I'm just gonna start a strip and then we're gonna rip it just down the width. So I've just got ripping it. What I'm looking for is kind of that rustic. You see how there's threads hanging off? That's gonna give it kind of the rustic farmhouse vibe I'm going for. These aren't fabric scissors, so that kind of <laughs> that kind of lends to it because it's going to be a little rough. I think I'm going to do four of these. Now, let me just tell you about fabric. I love working with fabric. Um, I do, I paint wood designs, I do arts and crafts, all the things, and you don't have to be a sewer to use fabric. I love using different textiles in my uh, scrapbook even, um, my cards, making my journals, uh, all projects like this. Don't be afraid to get some fabric and do something crazy with it. What's neat about this is you do not, a lot of times if you've ever gone in the fabric department of any store, Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Joann's, um, you think you have to buy by the yard and it can be expensive but you, and maybe you just have a little project and you're not sewing a dress you do not have to buy it by the yard ask the um, worker the lady whoever's helping you um, representative uh, tell them you want this I think I got a half a yard I bought it by the half yard you can get an eighth of a yard you can get a quarter of a yard whatever you think you need. A lot of times when I'm not sure if I'm gonna like the fabric or if it's gonna fit for my project, I'll just get like an eighth of a yard. Or if you look a lot of times on the end caps in fabric sections um, or fabric stores, they'll have what they call fat quarters and they're just little squares, like 12 by 12 squares of a fabric. Those are great if you're not sure if the fabric's gonna work or the colors are right, you can buy those. Sometimes you can even get half quarters, so instead of a big stack of squares like that. And they usually are, um, there, it's usually a run of fabric, and by that I mean they all go together. Same color scheme kind of a deal, or they might all be Halloween, or they might all be Christmas kind of a thing. And, um, oh sorry, one of those little threads floated up when I got it in my mouth. So a lot of times you can buy fabric like that to test it out. And it's a little less expensive. So now for this, I think what I'm gonna do is just gather them up like so. I'm gonna leave the wispies maybe. I might pull those off because that was a bit much. And I think I'm just gonna tie a little bow. I'm not doing anything super crazy. This might be a little, just easy breezy. Let's see if I can, <laughs> I think I might have 
There we go. And we're going to pull it tight. As tight as we can get it. Maybe. Mm, okay. I'm going to kind of play with it because one side was a little bit longer. So we're just going to kind of play with it. I'm going to pull these guys apart so it kind of makes it a little fuller. If y'all happen to watch this, please feel free. I would love it if you shared the video so more people could see it. Um, sprinkle it all over the interwebs. That helps us with the algorithm, helps us to be seen. So I'm just kind of fanning this out. Should I add jingle bells? Nah, I think I might just leave it like this. Just kind of look how cute that little bow is. And I think all I'm going to do is set it on the top. Isn't that just cute like that? I'm pretty sure that's what we're going to do. All right, so I got my hot glue gun fired up. And I'm just going to glue that. Just put a good old dollop right there at the top. Get that glue gun. I need a new glue gun, I'm afraid. That one's about had it. And I'm just going to stick this bad boy like so on the top. And then we're going to kind of play with it. How cute is that? I love it. You got all these wild ones everywhere. You got these tails coming down. It just, all right, these might be a little too wild. Let me cut a couple of these off. Okay. I love it. Ta-da! Again, I could add some jingle bells or something, fluff it up a little more, but I love it just like that. What a whimsical little tree. So that's tree number one. We're going to move it to the side. And next, we'll work on this little guy. So we're going to get him screwed into his base. These bases are mostly dry. They're still a little tacky, but that's okay. This little guy, hold on. Just get it down in there a little bit more to make sure it's secure. Okay, I think we're in there. So that's this little guy. And I think what we're gonna do on him I have a, this is called aloe. It's kind of a sagey color. It's by Americana. I got these paints, um, folk art and Americana at Hobby Lobby. They're fairly inexpensive. They're like a dollar. Sometimes they go on sale. A dollar. They're not more than a dollar fifty. All right. We are going to use just a regular little mop brush situation and again i'm gonna try to dry brush i'm gonna go for a little bit more coverage on this one but i'm still just dry brushing meaning i'm not just trying to accent i am going all the way down but oops i got paint on the bottom that's okay but i'm not going for cool i'm spreading it very thin so you are still going to be able to see some of that wood grain through there. Love it. And okay. Again, I'm not putting a ton of paint on the brush. I'm just brushing it on until, um, I love this. I don't know if you could see that. There's like holes in there 
there's like a crack on that side. It just looks natural, right? It's so neat that all that adds character to the project. Oh my gosh, this one might be my favorite. I was gonna put an accent color, but honestly, I don't know if we need it. I'm trying to get around that little top without getting it on the metal. Just kind of getting that. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. All right. So cute. All right, so this is what I have. Just that green kind of dry brushed on there, you can see. But I think I'm gonna come back. This is Waverly, I got this at Walmart. This is called Truffle. So it's a pretty like creamy brown. And I think, oh, these, all the Waverly's have these little paper things on them, which after a while they get moist and just gonna kinda dab my brush in there. And I'm gonna kinda, again, dry brushing. So we're gonna kinda drop it. I think I'm just gonna kinda lightly Brushing it down, and that's picking up more of the brown in the background, kind of accenting it. Love, don't be afraid. If you got to get like a spare piece of wood or something and like practice before you do it on your project, do that, but play around with paints. Play around with them till you get a combo that works. This um, aloe and this truffle look so good together. All right, we're kind of back to the beginning. One more little. Dabbled this is cute. All right, this is tree number two. And honestly, I love the patina on this little metal piece at the top. And I do not think I'm gonna top it with anything because I love it so much, just like that. Isn't this the cutest little tree with all those little chippy holes and splits in the wood, that aloe green with a hint of truffle on the top. How pretty is this little Christmas tree? So that's tree number two. And then this guy, my tall guy, go ahead and get him in here. And he is pretty. Let me see, I gotta kind of bend him a little bit. To get him straight. There he is. He's still leaning a little bit, but I think that's gonna be good. Did I have him on the right? There we go. That's better. Okay, so gosh, he's so pretty. I think for this one, I'm gonna move this palette over. Um hold on, let me make sure we got lids on all this. So nothing dries out and gets crazy on us. So I brought up a styrofoam plate because I think what I wanna do is add um, some water to this paint and do just a little bit of a 
stain watercolor like a paint stain situation um, stain is great <laughs> that's in my face <laughs> hello <laughs> so you could use stain for this if you wanted to um, but you can make your own stain or stain light uh, situation with paint this is apple barrel paints these come from Walmart they're like 50 cents um, each whoops that one is also kind of dry I had some crusty in there so we're gonna get that off this is a palm leaf color it's really pretty it's kind of in between a olive and a lime almost it's really pretty and then this is good old holly branch so it's more of a festive primary green and i'm just gonna kind of put those together we're gonna kind of blend our paint today and then i've got a little bit of water and we're gonna kind of put a little excess of water and i have got an old just dowel. I think this isn't a dowel actually. I think this was a skewer from my kitchen at one point. <laughs> so I am just um, kind of blending the two paints and the water. Kind of just loosen it up a little bit. Do that right there. I've got a super used <laughs> chippy painty situation. Painty brush. I'm just going to, you see how thin that paint is? And we're just going to take that and we're going to kind of go on down. And you'll see it's not, um, it's really just giving it a stain effect. It's not, it's gonna, it's going on super thin, just like a stain would. And what we'll do, let me get it covered and then I'll show you. Once I get it all the way around, sorry, I was kind of not paying attention to where my camera was. Once. All right, so once we've got it all the way around like so, napkin, and I'm going to kind of um, wipe it. Just like you would wipe a stain or spread out a stain. So... I'm up here at the top. I don't want to get too much on that metal, but just wiping off the excess. And that's okay if a little bit of the green gets on there because it's a tree, right? It's all uh, working together. Just going back over the bottom where I had kind of missed. And kind of just wiping it. So it's just, oh my gosh, so cute. Well, how about I miss this part down here? Okay. All right, so we pretty much have all the excess wiped off. 
And that's how I wanted it. Do you see? I was just almost like a gel stain situation. It's just got like a light green stain look. Still trying to bend it. I might have to screw it in a little bit more to get it to be semi-straight, but there we go. All right, I'll put this in there because we're done with the paint. So now we need a topper because this actually is the little footer and you'll see it moves. So like your chair kind of um, levels out wherever you are. And uh, so we're gonna put a topper on there and I found in my Christmas stash, I found these fun little pine cones and I found this mini one that I think is gonna be great. And you'll see there's a little hole and this has a, just a little nub on it and I thought that's gonna be perfect. So we're gonna hot glue this pine cone to the top. And I thought, that that would be a perfect little topper. Although, I wonder, I don't think I have any. I was like, I wish I had some moth handy, but I don't have any. I don't have anything that could pretend to be moths either nearby me. But that's okay, I think it's gonna be cute just like this. If I find moths, I might add it. And then I'll um, show you in the final picture. I will take a final picture of these when they're all done and in their pretty place on the table and show you guys. But, ah! All right, get this guy on there. Oh my gosh, how cute is he? Sweet. I love it. Look at that little pine cone. He's got like a little crown. I love it, love it, love it. Love that. Okay, so this is our tall tree. Um, hold on a second, I lost my light. There we go. I've got our tall tree. These are all reused old spindles, which I happen to be gifted these by my in-laws, but you could totally find these at flea markets. You can actually find spindles of different various sizes at Lowe's if you want to buy them new. Um, I love it though because it was something that was old that was going to get thrown out and we got to reuse it and make something cute out of it. So he, here are my interpretation of Christmas trees via spindles. So these are gonna go on my dining room table. I love them. I hope this inspires you to just get creative. Just let your imagination go. Come up with something fun. Um, reuse what you have on hand. Um, use fabric materials. You could do this with an old shirt. It doesn't have to be new fabric that you buy in the store, um, but you could do a ribbon up here or twine or an old shirt, an um, old Christmas flannel something fun, just reuse, recycle, and make something crafty. So I hope that, again, I hope this inspires you. I hope that you are having a blessed Friday, and I'll see you soon with some more Christmas trees. We have, um, I'm looking on my table, I have all my crafts lined up. We have at least three, three, not, this is not three, that's two, Lois. We have at least three more Christmas tree crafts two minis, both of them are probably gonna have fabric on them, and we have one bigger Christmas tree that's gonna go on my mantle. It has fabric also, and yeah, I'm pretty excited about that one. So, I'll be back soon with those. Love you guys, happy Friday. Mwah.